It's on. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah. Good to see y'all. Um, my name is Libby Koch. It's great to be back here at the Duck. Um, and I brought two friends with me who are making their Mucky Duck debuts. Well, please welcome my good friend Alice Wallace, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, originally from Southern California. Well, Florida. She's been been, Southern, yeah, yeah bounce she's around yeah, a lot. It's bounces fine. Bounces around. There'll be a quiz later. It's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from up in DFW, Andrew Delaney. Yeah. What Hi. do you claim now, Dallas or Arlington? I Arlington. live in Arlington. Yes. Oh. Yes. So there you go. Well, from Arlington, Texas. Yeah. Andrew Delaney. I uh. I don't know. I got Houston roots. I uh. uh I d I came here uh, directly from a bowling alley. Uh. Well, this is true. I, I Today? Came, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I finished my recording session. I drove to a specific bowling alley. It's the Palace Social. Oh, yeah. Over That's a solid. On yeah, Bel Air. Absolutely. Um, now, the only reason I, I wanted to visit that place is because uh, it's, it's open under new management right now. But back in the 60s, my, uh, my grandma and her husband, James, ran the restaurant no at the Palace Lanes. Uh, wow. Yeah. So you do have Houston roots. I do. Bel Air roots. And more interesting than that, uh, my, there was a guy there. Uh, his name was Kenneth Starnes, and he was a bowling coach at the Palace Lanes. Spoiler alert, my first name is Kenneth. Um, so my grandma met Kenneth at the bowling alley, and uh, they decided they liked each other quite a bit, and they started to uh, have an affair. Whoa. And... Uh, Kenneth decided uh, that that was not an honest thing to do, so he decided to come clean. So he went to the Palace Lanes over on Bel Air and met her husband, James, at the restaurant at the Palace Lanes and uh, said to James, hey, this is what's been going on. We're real sorry. We just want to come clean, be honest. We'll just give her a quick divorce. We'll leave town and never hear from us again. That's what, that's what Kenneth thought would be a, uh, a thing reasonable to thing to do. James, to Didn't his credit, so. uh, he had different ideas. He went back into his office, and he got a pistol. <laughs> and he said, uh, and this is pretty badass, see if she wants you now, and shot Kenneth in the crotch. At the Palace Lanes? At the Palace Lanes, 1962, Houston, Texas. Have we written this song yet? I have not. I just tell this story on stage. What are you doing stage. later? Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... I wish we knew so, a songwriter. Kenneth, get, Kenneth, he gets he gets shot and he goes uh, he gets he gets James goes to jail, which is hopefully what happens when you shoot somebody in broad daylight in a bowling alley. And Kenneth, he goes to the hospital, and then uh, Kenneth recovers enough. He goes down to the courthouse. He meets with James a second time. He says, "Deal still stands. We will still leave town, and I will not press charges for you shooting me." That's love. That is love. And uh, so uh, James, who's facing jail time at that point, signs the papers. And that's how uh, Kenneth Starnes and my, my grandma, Lina, uh, ended up getting married. And, and uh, so my name is Kenneth Andrew Delaney, and I was born, I'm named for a man who took a bullet in the junk for love. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like so that's the perfect introduction to I'm you. I'm just, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, that's me, that's the long way of me saying, yes, I have Houston roots. <laughs> Here is perhaps a shorter way of saying that I have Houston roots. Uh, There's a song about uh, coming, I don't know, uh, one of the trips I, I, I came back here for my, my grandma Lina's uh, funeral. But uh, many other, many other trips. Spent a lot of time in this town, <laughs> as demonstrated by the song. Anyway, thank you. Meet halfway at Centerville at that beef jerky spot. Nobody's seen since the Buckies came through. Grandma would drive me the rest of the way past that big old statue there that welcomes you to that place where they know you as one of their own if you speak the secret language of the city. Marvin Zendler, Eyewitness News, and Gallery Furniture will save you.
Now I gotta go back, but I don't wanna go back. Cause she's not waiting there for me. Well, she is, but she ain't. You understand, don't make me say it all. You know what I mean? And I don't think I've cried that much in my life. Maybe I never will again. Got me thinking about all that flood water rising, rescue boats rolling down, Interstate 10 in that place where they know you as one of their own if you speak the secret language of the city. That guy Joel Austin is kind of a tool. And Gallery furniture will save you, yeah. Went to a bar that has since closed down and met a friend who has since moved away. Stood up on stage in my sharp, sharp suit, but Nobody asked me why I couldn't play in that place where they hold you like one of their own and they speak the secret language of the city. Marvin Zendler, Eyewitness News, and Gallery Furniture will save you money. play a song about uh, driving to Houston as well, but uh, no firearms were discharged in the uh, background of the song at all. I mean, to my knowledge. Uh, called Back to Houston.
in circles because I moved on all the same. This sand resolution of the age old lover's game. so much. Well, I have zero Houston songs. Um, so I'm feeling a little inadequate up here, but it's, uh, <laughs> and no songs about anybody being shot in the crotch. Um, the night is young. We could <laughs> write one about both. <laughs> I find that there's not a lot of those out there in the world. Right. You know. Not enough. No, but I will try, okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I need one of those stories in my life, really, but you know, but you tell it well. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, but you moved from Tennessee to Houston and I moved to Tennessee a few years back. So I'll, I'll sing my song about moving to Tennessee, which, um, yeah, I was living in Southern California and I moved to Nashville, my big move to Music City in December of 2019 which was perfect if you wanted to line it up almost exactly with when the pandemic hit. Um, it was great timing. It was good timing. I moved and then couldn't leave the house for a long time. And uh, But you know, as a songwriter, I knew I was gonna have to write a moving to Nashville song, as cliche as it sounds, but you're like, you know it's gonna happen. Um, but for the first like year that I was in Nashville, I just watched everything on Netflix and contemplated my existence. So I didn't write any songs really. Some people were like writing whole albums and novels and learning languages and I was just like, what's, nah. what have I not watched yet? All of Breaking Bad? Yes, yes I'm still watching. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, so. But the next year I finally like, it was sinking in that I live in Nashville and you know, being from Southern California for 12 years prior, I was reacclimating myself with things like humidity and like mosquitoes and some of the, the fun things that come along with summer in Nashville. And, uh, but I will say that in June, when the fireflies came out, I thought, okay, if I have to get used to mosquitoes in order to get fireflies, maybe I can handle it here. So my Nashville song is called Fireflies. It goes like this. Something in the way the air hangs heavy and wraps you in a blanket every time you step outside. They say mosquitoes like you if you're sweet, so I pretend that I'm not sweet. Still, they eat me alive. But it's so so green here in Tennessee on a nearly summer night in early June and California I think of you all the time but I don't know that I'll be back anytime soon because it feels like home now when the fireflies come out. The nights are warmer than you'd think, but as the sun begins to sing, you hear the evening melody and then a thousand little stars leap and dance in the backyard to a 
song yeah is that on your new record it's got yeah i have a new record coming out june 28th and that one is on there so yeah and if you wanted to find out more about that record you could i don't know maybe sign up on your email list that's back there i do have an email list right back yeah. there okay. and lots of obsolete round discs that play music coasters uh, <laughs> do you have any songs about bugs uh, andrew no I'm like, Probably. I bet you <laughs> here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. There were all these beautiful segues between the songs, but I also feel like an important part of showmanship is setting expectations. And uh, <laughs> like I bet I write these yeah. very <laughs> specific songs, and like so, clean segues not really my not really my bag. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just on my gonna, toes tonight. Huh? I'm on my toes. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bust up the round. Basically, is what I love I'm it. Do. Bring it. This is my first time playing with Libby. It's nice. It we hang out. A lot. You know, we yeah. have a lot of fun, but uh -huh. we've never played a show together. It's Alice and I, we toured a whole bunch. But. And Alice and I played a ton of shows together, too. So yeah. <sighs> I know. It's Beautiful. all coming together. It's all, it's all happening. <laughs> Thank you all for being part of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to play this, this song about growing up as a goth kid in a small town Texas, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. <laughs> There were not a lot. There's not a bustling gothic subculture in Cedar Hill, Texas, where I grew, did most of my growing up. So uh, we had to join forces with the theater kids. Uh, and then, of course, it turns out there's only one thing that happens when you get goth kids and theater kids together. Well, there's two things that can happen. Here's a song about the other one. Oh, to be 17 again Cat piss house and a mean old man Couple friends that understand Cause they grew up just the same Connie, Chewy, Jack and Beth Well, she's in love with Mary Dad Who's been saying she'll kill herself Since I can't remember when While the whole damn world's a 4A football game Well we knew where we'd be when Friday came Midnight at the Rocky Horror Picture Show Eyeliner and pantyhose, yeah That's where I wanna go Well someday I believe I'm gonna leave this town Cross that bridge and burn it down But I ain't thinking about it now 
Turn out it's me and my best girl in the old routine And those fearless bastards shadow on the screen Uh-huh Well, they punk me every day at school Call me faggot in the locker room But hell, I'll get it worse at home if it's one of those bad days So I just keep quiet and try to bide my time Singing science fiction in the back of my mind Midnight at the Rocky Horror Picture Show Eyeliner and pantyhose, yeah That's where I want to go Well, someday I believe I'm gonna leave this town Cross that bridge and burn it down But I ain't thinking about it now Tonight it's me and my best guy in the old routine And those fearless bastards shadowing on the screen Well things changed back in 99 when we lost him We chose our paths and off we went Never did the time warp again. At midnight, at the Rocky Horror Picture Show, eyeliner and pantyhose, yeah, that's where I'd want to go. Well, back then, before I up and left that town, crossed that bridge and burned it down. Well, I'm thinking about it now. About me and my best friends, the old routine And everything I was at 17 Midnight at the Rocky Horror Picture Show Thank you. We were having an in-depth conversation about, uh, well, not super in-depth, I mean, about meatloaf backstage. <laughs> oh, I missed the meatloaf conversation. Yeah. The, I mean, the meatloaf artist like meatloaf. the Rocky Port Horror Picture yeah. Show, not, <laughs> right, not, not like the, the food. Yeah. Um, My wife, huge meatloaf fan. I had never listened to the music of meatloaf outside of the Rocky Horror Picture fair. Show. And then she's like, no, you got to listen to, uh, you know, Bad seven 12 minute songs right. in a row yeah. and i'm like no i'm into this this yeah. is weird but i'm into this yeah <laughs> our neighbors across the street uh you know we get together and drink beer and play dominoes and whatever and the the night meatloaf died we were drinking beer and playing dominoes and the two of them like early 60s like you just never guess they're singing every single single word to Rocky horror i was like i love you guys <laughs> <laughs> It's like weird. It it's weird. You find you, the you people know? that like. Yeah. You find your people. It's a different, uh, different crowd of people that love that movie. So. It's true. It's true. I, I have no idea what song I'm going to play now because. Right. Uh, Where do you go from there? You have right. any transvestite songs? I don't. <laughs> or meatloaf, or. Yeah, even. No crotch shots. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess it's, you know, <laughs> it's wide open. Just whatever you want to play. It's wide open. I'm just going yeah. to pick a song. There you go. See? Uh, no no blank more slate. segues. Blank slate. No, more no clean segues, segues tonight. Uh, yesterday, I saw the eclipse uh, in Fredericksburg. So I, I did a lot of driving today. Uh, but I was playing this uh, cool little... It was It was sort of a festival, sort of not. Sort of just like... You know, friends and songwriters drinking a bunch of wine and watching the eclipse. Um, and I got to play this song with my friend Susan Gibson, who I wrote this song with. Uh, and yeah, she's mm. pretty great. She's pretty great. Everybody I loves also Susan like. Gibson. She's so awesome. And uh, songwriters, I suggest, you know, asking her to write songs with you because I think they turn out really good. Right. It's like cheating, kind of. <laughs> Cheat code. Um, <clears throat> but it was fun to get to play the song with her and uh, just hang out and spend time. That's one of the cool things about, I think, like a kind of a festival thing is, you know, we're always all on the road. And we don't get a chance to just hang out and like we just were backstage. And uh, it's fun stuff. So mm -hmm. 
Long story short, Susan and I wrote this song. It's called A Fire in My Heart. Pass me by, worn out with watching weather, worn out with watching war. I see everybody fighting. Tell me what's the fighting for? Oh, oh, I'm settling down. What happened to the fire in my heart? Lost in the crowd. What happened to the fire in my heart? Oh, oh, oh. record yet right not yet on the next one the next <laughs> one <laughs> thanks i like it well i'm gonna make it this year i i've started to tell people so that i have to do it <laughs> right hold you know yourself I mean? accountable right exactly <laughs> y'all will hold me accountable right my mom will that's what i'll call you for. every day libby <laughs> good i, I won't know. 
I know. I mean, actually, this inspired me to want to do this song, which is another sort of self-reflective slash self-doubt sort of song um, that is the first track on my new record. And it was inspired by the fact that, yeah, like I, when, when I booked studio time to do my new record, I wasn't really ready to record a record, but I was just like, I'm just going to do it. And then it will happen and I will write the songs. And I, this, uh, this song didn't exist when I booked the studio time but I wrote it as I was having like panic attacks like every day about going into the studio because I was telling these guys back in the green room that like this is the first album I've done the Nashville way, which basically means going into a room with like all Grammy winning musicians who you've never met before and in two days you record a whole record with no rehearsal. Like they've never heard your songs before. Yeah, they before. don't even listen like, to the songs before <laughs> the session. They're just like, all right, what you got? I know. And the producer was like, this is when the magic happens. Let the magic happen. I'm like, that. this magic sounds terrifying. <laughs> You're like, I'm a planner and that's hard for me. I know, this is not, where's my control over this situation? It is, does not exist. So I was wrestling with that, but trying to trust the process while simultaneously freaking out. Um, so I decided to write a song about it, as you do as a songwriter, because it's a good form of therapy. And... Um, so this isn't really a song about the panic attacks, but it's a song about this feeling that I wake up with often that I don't know if you guys can relate to, that where you're just kind of going, you know, one day people are going to discover that I have no idea what I'm doing. Right? Like, <laughs> I'll drink to that. Yeah. So, <laughs> We're all just I've, making it up. Yeah, just making it up as we go along and hoping it goes okay, you know? And uh, so I wrote this song, and now it's probably my favorite song on the record. So... Uh, way to throw yourself into terrifying situations and getting art out of them. So this song is called Imposter. Someday someone's gonna find out my biggest secret. I know they will. It's just a matter of time. You can look right at me and never even see it Cause I've perfected the art of seeming fine Even when I'm not Someday someone's gonna figure out what I've been hiding I know they will Cause I can't keep a straight face And still no one will ever say I wasn't trying I've worked damn hard For this epic fall from grace Just like I was Taught And so Sure, the sky might fall and the truth might turn to doubt, but it's time. Someone found me out. Someday someone's gonna realize I'm an imposter. I know they will. It's just a question of when they'll shake their heads and say well this is gonna cost her they won't understand why i risked it all just to pretend that i was someone else someday someone's gonna find out that i've been faking i know they will can't keep this up and I'm the one whose heart I have been breaking who'd ever thought that I was worthy of love Fall, 
and the truth might turn to doubt but it's time someone found me out for what it's worth i've always thought you were the real deal <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah as I sit here and I listen to Libby and Alice sing, I, it makes me very grateful that I am funny. <laughs> I uh, love your voice, too. Aw, oh, thank no, you. No, you definitely can sing, Andrew. Uh, I, uh, if you want to... Uh, I, I, like, Alice, you did... Uh, I don't know. You probably have copies of End of the Blue here, right? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I worked a little bit with, with Alice on her Into the Blue album, and uh, she ended up cutting a song that I wrote that I was pretty proud of. Uh, so I figured I was, I'd do that one. And if Yay! you want to hear me sing it, you can buy it on one of my albums. If you want to hear Alice sing it instead, you can buy it on hers. So there you go. And the important thing is, but please buy the stuff. That's doesn't matter who from. Yeah, when I first met Andrew, I heard him sing this song, and it was just like... Goosebumps, and I was like, this is the best song I've ever heard. Can I sing this song? So, um, yes. It's so good. I love this song. <laughs> oh, wow. Let's just let's build up all these Sorry, expectations yeah. for people. Yeah. It's a good song. You got it. No, I, uh, I, I, was, I was hanging out with my friend. Uh, she's in this story. Uh, my, f my friend Maddie uh, earlier. If you all know the band uh, Mystery Loves Company, Maddie from Mystery Loves Company, she's <laughs> recording some cello on a record that I'm producing right now, and so I saw her earlier today. And... Uh, uh, she was part of the inspiration for this song because we were, uh, I was hanging out with her years and years ago, and I'm like, oh, what's this thing? It's like this pretty object on her keychain that looked like a hacky sack kind of on a little chain, but what it really was was a, was a fabric-wrapped steel ball, and if you swing it, it'll like crack somebody's skull. And then uh, my friend Mana, she has this other thing that looks like kind of a cat face, and you put your fingers through the eyes of the cat face and the little, little ears are knives and if you punch somebody it'll really mess them up she calls it a stabby tabby <laughs> um, and my friend Lindsay she's more old school she just carries a straight razor in her bra but uh <laughs> I noticed all of these objects and I and it, like it made me sad realizing uh why all of my women friends carried all these things so I wrote this song it's called elephants Walk with a purpose through the parking lot Keys in your knuckles cause you ain't got claws Remembering how your daddy taught you that Well boys will be boys, gotta watch your back Sitting there drinking at the bar alone Sharks come circle, wanna take you home Better not play coy, better not be mean Cause boys will be boys and they are fragile things And they got names for the ones that talk back And the ones that wear those clothes They got names for the ones that say yes And the ones that say no Baby, why you gotta be that way? Give us a smile, you got a pretty face. Well, there are things you do and things you can't. Well, live quiet as a mouse in a room full of elephants. Oh, don't he look so handsome in his Sunday best? Well, he said he's sorry, you know the rest. 
Shouldn't really play, Mom, he's just a kid. And boys will be boys, don't call him what he is. But they got names for the ones that talk back and the ones that wear those clothes. They got names for the ones that say yes and the ones that say no. I do sing it and I announce that it was written by Andrew Delaney. They're like, a guy wrote that song? <laughs> Hell yeah, he did. Hell yeah, he did. A guy who pays attention to the women in his life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Find that it makes my life go smoother to pay attention to the women in my life. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I'll uh, play one that... Uh, well, I don't know how to follow that, so I'm just going to play something totally different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah?
Thanks so much. Dang, it's so fun hearing you guys' songs again for the fun. first time yeah. in ever. Yeah. And you're just, I always like forget how much you rock a guitar. Like, man, <laughs> you play it so good. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> I always forget like how phenomenal like your lyrics are and your voice and like I, I, y'all just have great songs and it's so fun getting to uh, share the stage and do these song swaps because it's like. I know. I, I, I really enjoy it. And thank y'all for, for being here and being part of the audience. And yeah. Yeah. Thanks for being at our reunion here. Uh. Yeah, touring's <laughs> the only way I get to see my friends these days. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. Can I get another Guinness when you get a chance? Thank you. Well, I thought um, maybe I'd sing a song. So, yeah, Andrew and I co-wrote a few songs for my last solo record. I thought maybe I'd sing one of them for you that... Uh, we wrote about a phenomenon out in Southern California when I was living there called the Santa Ana Winds. Anybody ever been out in California for the Santa Anas? It's usually about October. It's like hot, dry winds that blow in off the desert. And uh, of course, that's when the wildfire danger is the greatest because they're just so dry, just the slightest little spark. And uh, the whole hillside goes up in flames. And we wrote this song years ago now after what was then the worst wildfire California had ever seen called the Thomas Fire in like Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. I mean, ever since then, each year the fires get worse and keep breaking the records. But uh, I feel like this was the start of things looking really bad. <laughs> you know, like we're, it just feels like we're hanging on to the planet by the skin of our teeth these days uh, sometimes. So, uh, so we wrote this little number about a very serious topic. But uh, it's called the Santa Ana Wind. Out on the horizon, there's a wicked orange glow. While a neighbor sprays a rooftop with a garden hose, you heard they couldn't save the horses, so they had to let them go. While the Santa and winds just blow. Newsman, he keeps talking like he thinks that you don't know. And the shelters, they're all stocked up with prayer and with hopes. And it's get out now and on your way with whatever you can hold while the sand and winds just blow.
blow Oh, the sand and the winds just blow The sand and the winds Obviously, during the co-writing session, I sang the really high part there towards the end. <laughs> yeah, that was all, all him. You, all, you. all Andrew. <laughs> Your voice does things that, like I don't understand. <laughs> How is that physically possible? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little ridiculous sometimes. And I do uh, like to also mention, like, in that, when we were writing the song, I like talking about the Santa Barbara thing and the St. Barbara thing. I oh, yeah. No, know if you remember. Yeah, I'm sure you do. We were like, in, the fire was in Santa Barbara, and... Andrew likes to look things up while you're writing songs. He's like, I wonder who St. Barbara was. And so we look up St. Barbara, <laughs> and like, among other things, St. Barbara was the patron saint of firefighters. So St. Barbara had to yeah. make an appearance in the song, light a candle to St. Barbara and watch it burn. So, Dang. Yeah. That's really good. Time-wise, hey yeah. Time-wise, where are we at? Are we like halfway, or More are we past halfway. half? I think we've got so we do two, two more each? Rounds? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. cool. All right. Okay. Well, I'm going to do... I'm, I'm in a new song kind of mood, so I'm going to do this newer song. I, uh, I became a father for the, the second time uh, during the pandemic. Uh, I, got, I, I have a 22-year-old uh, daughter, and then I got, I got married during the pandemic, and uh, my, uh, my wife had... Uh, at the time we got married, she had a, a five-year-old. She's... she's, she's Nine now? Oh my God! I've been married that long. That's weird. Um, sorry, just sudden realization. But uh, it's been interesting. It's been it's been interesting. Uh, one thing I didn't remember about uh, being a dad was uh, uh, how quiet your children can walk in the middle of the night <laughs> and sneak up on you. Um, so. Uh, I wrote this song uh, in honor of, uh, uh, of, of Evelyn, who's, uh, who's my nine-year-old. And uh, uh, I, I, I t the first line of this song, I like to think, uh, hopefully there's some parents in the room, I like to think that the, the first line of this song is just, it's universal. Every parent has said this sentence out loud at some point before. We'll start there. <laughs> Jesus Christ, kid, how long have you been standing there? <laughs> been inside all year, mostly sad and pretty scared, and you took me by surprise, I suppose, lurking in the dark like a ghost from a Japanese horror film we can watch when you get older. <laughs> Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. No, nah, that don't sound quite right. Ain't your fault what they do. Sleep tight, dream sweet dreams despite everything you don't know. We're trying to keep away from you. I had a nightmare once. They came and took you away in a van full of rattlesnakes. I know how much sense that makes, but it felt so real in the moment. Had to check your room and make sure they didn't ever said it. I just hugged you till we both knew you were safe. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. No, that don't sound quite right. Ain't your fault what they do. Sleep tight. Dream sweet dreams despite everything you don't know. We're trying to keep away from you. I am worried all the time. We are worried all the time. Please don't worry all the time, especially when everything's fine. Sleep 
tight Don't let the bed bugs bite No, that don't sound quite right Ain't your fault what they do Sleep tight Dream sweet dreams Despite everything you don't know We're trying to keep away from you Very sweet. I love that song. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Get Other than yeah, relating her to a, a Japanese horror film, but yeah. Yeah, but, but I liked that too. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you see her silhouette in the hallway at two in the morning, you will also think the same thing. It's right. terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Uh, I don't have children, so that is generally terrifying to me anyway, but... <laughs> Yeah, if you saw a kid in your hallway, that'd be that real weird. That would be weird. really, yeah, that would freak me out, guys. Um, I also don't <laughs> need anything more to worry about. I, I do them plenty myself. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I, uh, I too, got married during the pandemic, and it's been four years all of a sudden. Yeah. Dang it, um, I didn't get married. I know. <laughs> get with the program, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make me feel left out. It's all right, well... <laughs> Not trying hard. You're enough, single, yes. <laughs> yes. All right. If y'all know any eligible gentlemen who would love to be with a beautiful singer songwriter with the voice of an angel, I mean, set her up. They are surprisingly hard to find. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, I was beating myself up because I, I, when Chuck and I first started dating about ten years ago, I, I wrote a series of breakup songs like preemptively because I was scared of messing it up, I think. Uh, like, well, I'm clearly going to mess this up, so I should just go ahead and write the breakup songs as though it's going to happen and just get ready. And then I didn't screw it up. Uh, but yesterday, actually, I was singing this song uh, with my band at this uh, festival thingy, this eclipse thing, and I was like, wait a minute. I wrote this song about Chuck when we first started dating and how I, you know, was really into him and... It's kind of a love song. So I did it. <laughs> so I'm going to play this thinking that, that I just realized yesterday after writing it, I don't know, 10 years ago, like, I did write a love song for my husband when he wasn't my husband yet. Anyway. Perfect. <laughs> it's called Don't Know How. I was trying to figure out how not to mess it up. Baby, I don't think it's so strange that you've been lonely Living a life on the road takes its toll on a man Wonder if you think it might change how you've been feeling If you took a chance on someone who would understand I have seen the city lights passing by through my window I know the sleepless nights when you just can't call Share. 
figured it out. <laughs> Thank you. you. Sure did. Oh, I know, I feel like as this tour goes on, we're going to be just sliding in more and more harmonies, be That's like, right, I, rem just do it. I remember these songs. Yeah. I will so be good. singing no harmonies on this tour. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll do some like um, interpretive dance over yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah. Or just, just mumbling. <laughs> That's mainly my mumbling. thing. I mean, that could work. <laughs> Okay, I know I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do here, but I think I might do another new song just because it speaks to my single um not being married. And actually, I wrote this for my new record with a girl in Nashville named Crystal Bower Socks that you guys might be familiar with. Um, I did the Nashville, I call it the Nashville handshake. You meet a new song, and I'm like, you want to write a song? Because like, you can do that in Nashville, and people sometimes say yes and she said yes i didn't really know her and i just did that and she's like okay so we wrote a song together and um you know it's always weird getting together with somebody you barely know to write a song you usually spend it's like kind of like an awkward first date and like for the first hour you're just like trying to chit chat be like so where are you from and how many brothers and sisters do you have um and you're just trying to find something you have in common and uh it turned out when we were talking about you know she spends most of her life on the road also and we discovered that one thing we had in common is that we had both fallen in love with two-stepping cowboys in Texas. <laughs> like you and, do. Like you do. You know, there's just something about a cowboy who can dance. It's just like this lethal combination that never ends well, so it makes for really good songwriting material. <laughs> so we wrote this song together, and it's going to be my new record, and I do love it. And uh, it's called When This Song Ends. With a damn fine two-step No cream, no sugar A man of simple taste But a hard not to crack He may not be what she needs But a three-minute song Could change everything Plays, he takes her hand 
They twirl and sway like waves on sand. It's the only way he'll ever let a woman close. There's no time to think about what comes next or where they'll be when this song ends. She's always been the kind to take it slow. But wherever he leads, she'll go. wasn't looking to find a fabled man and she's been broken by every charming face that took hers in his hands the dance the mood the man they've all been wrong she only knows the steps when she's in his arms Takes her hand, they twirl and sway like waves on sand. It's the only way he'll ever let a woman close. There's no time to think about what comes next or where they'll be when this song ends. She's always been the kind to take it slow. But where? might get hurt This dance could be their last or their first And the music plays He takes her hand They twirl and sway like waves on sand It's the only way he'll ever let a woman close There's no time to think about what comes Next, or where they'll be when this song ends. She's always been a kind to take it slow. But wherever he leads, she'll have to close her eyes and trust her feet. Wherever he See what this trip provides. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I have fallen in love with a few. Set you up. Few cowboys in Texas. I, I love being a wingman. It's my favorite. <laughs> ah, perfect. I really do. <laughs> oh, I don't think no. No, I do, but no. I apologize. But I, I love you for knowing that that song exists. Uh, I've, okay, so in my time as an artist, I've released uh, 10 albums. Uh, a number of them are for sale over there. Uh, but uh, I was like, I'm like the prolific songwriter guy. And, uh, you know, um, then I didn't write any songs for two years uh, during, during the pandemic. I put out a record and then I just stopped writing songs. And uh, one day, I was, uh, I was, you know, I, I don't know, it kind of bummed me out as far as my identity and everything. But uh, I, one day I was listening to a bunch of Dan Reader. Is anybody familiar with Dan Reader? Um, yep. Well, <laughs> Dan Reader, uh, he writes these songs, and you lis if you listen to enough Dan Reader, you will, you will have the thought, writing songs is not that hard. <laughs> and... Uh, so I, uh, I just, I sat down that night and I, uh, I just wrote down all of the events of my day and my thoughts about them and then I wrote this poem that turned into this song. Um, 
which is called Tires, and it's dedicated to my mom and to my uh, to my daughter Anna, who's uh, 22 years old and and doing so much better than I was at 22. Oh my god, did something right. All right. <laughs> Dang, I was so broke. I remember my mom bailing me out of jams when the car would break down. I never wrote her a note to give her my thanks. But that would have been nice. Yeah, it would have been nice. I saw my daughter today. Drove across town to buy her some tires, cause the old ones wore out. And somebody showed me that that's what love is. Yeah, and it did nice. sky doesn't fall and she decides to have kids she might buy them some tires because that's what love is they might write her a note but she won't need a note still a note would be nice oh it sure would be nice it sure would be nice Andrew Delaney, y'all. Thanks, that everybody. It's so sweet. I'm like, don't cry. I never write my mom a note. <laughs> never do here either, and my mom is here. Actually, I think she's in the ladies' room, but she comes to all my shows, and she brings her friends, and I, I love her so much. And Thanks, Libby's mom. Yay, Libby's mm -hmm. mom. Yeah. Thanks, Libby's mom. She really mom's is in the bathroom friends. right now. <laughs> oh, she's missing her big arm. Y'all let her know, please. <laughs> Just yell real loud. No, please don't. Hi. I don't think it's that kind of room. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to play one more, and Alice is going to play one more. And then I don't know if y'all know, but people are watching this show on the Internet also, on Facebook and on, on YouTube. And you, you can subscribe to the Mucky Ducks YouTube channel live at Norfolk Street. And if you're a subscriber, you get to see the encore, which only the live audience and the subscribers get to see. So tonight, mm -hmm. y'all are going to get to see our encore, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to uh, dedicate my last song, last song of the evening, uh, to Brian and Pam Kalanick, who are watching online. Woo! Um, and who are also hosting Alice and Andrew at their house tonight, which is so nice. They have a really nice house. They're, they really do, cool. and they're the nicest human beings ever. And I wrote this song with Brian several years ago, and it's one of my favorites. And um, we wouldn't have been able to do it without Pam, who uh, who made us banana nut muffins. That just really, like, it was songwriting fuel. I, I don't know what else to say. We wrote the song in, like, 30 minutes. How else can you explain it? Right. It was definitely the muffins. Science. This is called Out of My Misery to Brian and Pam. I never liked that chair, but you wanted it right there. You said it reminded you of a front porch swing. Packed up your coffee cups Took an hour to gather them up You never bothered to wash them They're yours to clean Cause I'm 
I'm making plans here I'm moving on T-shirts that you wouldn't wear A picture of us by the stair Some things I could just throw away I don't care where they go But others made me miss you like hell Like the mason jar full of seashells to move on I'll clean out each cupboard in the corner till your memories go I like my chances to finally be free Baby I'm putting you out of my misery Yeah That's a start What in the world Am I supposed to do With my broken heart So I bought that Four poster bed I bought it since I was a kid A new coat of paint And a picture To hang by the stairs Appreciate y'all. Magic. And hey, uh, thanks to uh, to the Mucky Duck for just being such a wonderful host for Absolutely. music here in Houston, Texas. What a cool room. It's really been my home venue over the years, and I'm so grateful and, and blessed and, and thankful that they give me the opportunity to bring my friends and super talented songwriters uh, to share with y'all so and and thank you guys more than anything we can't do it without you yeah all right alice you about to do what i think you're about to do standing up for this one <laughs> buckle up everybody oh, if i can get this thing to come up here we go i like to end my shows in a special way that's kind of ridiculous and over the top and these guys are our game for it so we're doing it we're gonna do it because you know there's not enough yodeling going on in the world that's a fact and so I am trying to, to, you know, take it upon myself to bring it back one show at a time. There's not that many of us. I know Slade Cleves is doing it. There's, there's a couple, but not that many. So, you know, it's an uphill battle, and we got to fight the good fight. So uh, this is um, my song I wrote years ago about teaching myself how to yodel. And uh, it's kind of a mini yodeling lesson if you get the urge to yodel along at some point. Um, open invitation. 
So, uh, all right, we're just going to jump right in here. Let's do a little yodeling to close out this set. Well, in case you haven't heard, I like to sing a little now and then, but then one day my world it was to change. And I heard a voice sing loud and clear like I had never heard. And I knew that I wanted to sing that way. So many times it was kind of absurd But I had to glue those sounds into my head And I'm sure I drove my friends insane With my incessant practicing And I sang these words over and up Basics down the low, slice the leaves. Well, everything just fell right into place. And my voice figured out what to do. Skip through the notes with ease. And my fingers on the strings. Keep the pain. Texans are friendly to yodeling. Occasionally, I get some blank stares at this point in the in the uh, in the song, but it's fine. You can't win them all, right? Well, now pretty soon all that just got too easy for me, and I had to push myself for something more. And the only way that I could think to make it any harder was just to go faster than before. <laughs> Wallace. <laughs> He's Andrew Delaney. I'm Libby, Libby Coke. Coke. Thank y'all so much. Good night. Thank you. I mean, sort of good night. We're going to do a little encore for y'all if that's all right. I'm in. For everybody's sake here, just make sure. Because we love you. Because the yodeling didn't, you know, throw things out. Oh, we are back on air. We're back. Hi, subscribers. Hi, friends. Oh, 
We decided, uh, we tried to figure out a song we all could, you know, mess around and sing for you guys to close out. We, we uh, landed on an Emmy Lou Harris song. Yeah, and you know, it, a little more information. I think the first person I ever heard play this song was you. Really? And I, and I didn't really know this Emmy Lou song. I grew up like a huge Emmy Lou fan. And I didn't really know this song, oh, but wow. but you would always sing it at shows yeah. that we did, uh-huh. and like it turned me on to it, and I started like loving this song. Cool. And I then I did it c- not know that. I was right now years old when I learned that. <laughs> <laughs> and then funny, I just bought this guitar like five months ago, and it's like my new prized possession. She's so pretty. And because it it's the kind of gar- guitar that Emmy Lou plays, I knew it needed like an Emmy Lou name, and so I was thinking back through my favorite Emmy Lou songs, and I thought of this one. Um, that Libby introduced me to to name my song or m- name my guitar Lillian. So we're gonna sing Lillian's right, song cool. here. I did not know <laughs> that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just see how this goes. Yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh wait, I turned the volume down. Sorry, I was tuning. Okay, here we go. Now we have guitar. best friend Lillian and her blue tick hound dog Gideon sitting on the front porch cooling in the shade singing every song that the radio played waiting for the Alabama sun to go down to red dirt girls in a red dirt town me and Lillian (laughs) just across the line and a little southeast of Meridian
Hey, thank y'all so much. Andrew Delaney, Alice Wallace. I'm Libby Coke. Libby Coke. Can't everybody. thank y'all enough. Thank you.